coming on here just for a little bit today and I want to early wish everybody a very very Merry Christmas Christmas for me is kind of a double-edged sword it's uh, I get a little little melancholy this time of year as I know a lot of people do my family is a long distance away the memories of years gone by and holidays with family and friends and loved ones is in the past. And it's just something that we get through. And I will gratefully be seeing my grandkids on the 27th. They'll be in New York for a few days, so I will get to see them. And I will love every minute of that. I think Christmas became a difficult for me, time for me early in my life. My parents were in their mid or later 30s when I was born, so I was not born into a very young family. I was the second child. The reason that my parents were so much older by the time my brothers and I were born was that my poor father, it took him 12 years <laughs> to convince my mother to marry him. My mother was a very independent woman for a woman of her day. She was the eldest of the children in her family. She'd lived through the depression. She sort of was taking care of the family financially because her mother was sickly and her father never earned a lot of money, so she was a big contributor. And I guess she wanted to live her life and she wanted to she traveled, she took cruises, she, she did a lot, as I say, for a woman of that time. On the other side of the coin, and I always thought of my mother as supremely lucky, my father adored her. He adored her from probably when he first met her. She was admittedly a beautiful woman in her youth. But he loved her very much. What I found out many years later is that she had been in love with somebody else who, with whom she'd had a relationship for a long time, but he didn't want to or just couldn't commit to getting married. And she did want to get married and have a family. So eventually she gave in to my father. And my father on the day he died, he said to my mother, if I had it all to do over again, I would marry you and I would live exactly the life that we have lived. And this was not the easiest life, but what a wonderful thing to hear. Growing up, my relatives, therefore, and my father was the baby of his family, so a lot of my relatives were considerably older. And holidays were not thrilling growing up. It seemed that I lost a lot of people on holidays, came to the point where I would dread any holiday coming up because that's when people died. It was really sad as a child, so my association to it was a little bit strained to begin with. I had the wonderful years when my Uncle Harry was around till I was six, and uh, he, I, I've told you before, he was my personal Santa. He was the man who came Christmas Eve and left a big bag leaning against the wall for me when I woke up in the morning and there was always something very exciting in that bag. There was always just the perfect gift that would make a little girl happy. After he died, there was all of the difficulty dealing with that because I've told you before, I absolutely adored him. And considering the fact that he was only in my physical world for six and a half years, his legacy has been with me my entire life, so I'm grateful for that. Also, my father died on Christmas Eve, 
and I felt terrible, terrible guilt that year because he had called me the day before and uncharacteristically, he said to me, I love you very much and I wanted to tell you. He was not demonstrative. He was a caring man. He was strong and he was all the good things, but he was not demonstrative. And I had a little bit of discomfort when he told me that. It was like a message he had to get off his chest, he had to make clear. So that was, um, and then of course he died the next day. And he had asked me the day before if I would be coming over. And I had just gotten married, then I was married a short time. And I told him I didn't know if I had time. I had to live with that statement for the next nine years I berated myself for telling him that because of course the minute I got the news we went back to the house and I was there with the family as the end had just come. So Christmas for me was kind of a difficult time for a long time. After about nine years I kind of got into this spirit of it and then when my son was growing up and I, you know, I had all the gift buying for him and all of the associated fun stuff, that was, that was great. When my son was probably, oh, I know he was young. Could he have been five or six, seven maybe? I had gotten his Christmas present early and I had hidden it well in the back of the closet because he had a habit of searching around to see if he could find anything and I wanted to make sure that he had that excitement of opening that wonderful gift. So. One day I was sitting in the living room and the lights of the tree were flickering in the background and David came over to me with the biggest smile on his face, holding up the toy that I searched so long and hard for and I had tucked all the way in the back of the closet. He found it and I looked at him and I said, you ruined my Christmas. I said, I wanted it to be a surprise for you. And he just had the biggest grin. So I guess in reality, it worked for him. All the years after that, I would get the presents early, wrap them up and take them next door to my girlfriend and have her hide them in her house. So I didn't have to worry that he would ever do that again. My mother's sister was a tremendous gift giver. She was the one who always sent cards for every occasion and she always had presents. They were not restricted to any holiday in particular. My aunt's philosophy in life was, if a little is good, a lot is better. She used to work, she was a seamstress. She used to work in that, in that um, industry and they used to have these street vendors. So there was one day when there was a vendor outside and he was hawking skirts. My aunt bought probably 10 to 12 skirts. Maybe that's the why I am the way I am. Um, they were not all the same size. They didn't necessarily fit anybody, but they were a good buy. <laughs> and uh, she was attracted to them. And I remember her coming home and she gave me a number of the skirts. There were a few that fit and the rest of them were too big, but she was a very, very generous kind of person. So I kind of grew up with that as well, with that, oh, have some. But then again, she was also eat a little more you can never have too much. I think that's a, a little bit of my problem. Although that's not true. I don't eat a lot. I just eat constantly.
Then there was the Christmas party that my husband and I had gone to. It was associated with his job. <clears throat> it was in Manhattan. There was snow on the ground that year. It was a cold night, really a cold night. And this was in an apartment in the city. And when we got up to the apartment, we walked in the door and it was overflowing with people. The minute I walked in the door, I was assailed by this smell that I didn't recognize, but that was driving me crazy and having allergies, I really was concerned. Turned out it was pot. Now I was one of those people, possibly rare, who had never tried pot, never smelled pot, had no, no idea what it was like. And I spent almost the entire party in the kitchen, little bitty kitchen, with the window cracked open and snow about this high on the windowsill outside, trying to smell fresh air <laughs> because I couldn't stand the smell of the pot. So another one of those random memories that suddenly come back. So on that note, love you all, take care, have a great time with your families and enjoy every bit of the holiday season.